In my last video, I showed how you could use the group gen tool to generate polygroups on a triangulated mesh, which you could then use with the polygroup editing tool to do poly modeling like operations. So one limitation of the group generator tool is that it's based on a pretty simple heuristic. So if I have a sort of higher resolution triangulated mesh like this, and I'd like to do some low level editing on the sort of input quads, um, it's going to have a hard, you're going to have a hard time getting a setting of this angle tolerance that's going to pull all those quads out. It can help to turn down this min group size down to one. And then you can see at the very lowest level, we'll basically get all the triangles. And if I sort of slowly drag it up, you'll see quads pop in and out at different thresholds. Uh, so, you know, this isn't really a usable result. So we're going to have to do some hand editing of these quads. Now, if you wanted to reconstruct the entire quad mesh, you know, I wouldn't, uh, that, that's going to be really tedious. But in this example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reconstruct part of it so that I can add a little control panel onto the arm of this chair here. Because uh, I don't want to sort of edit the entire thing, I just want to edit that little part. So I'm going to accept this current result. And then I'm going to jump over to a different tool called uh, the Group Paint tool. So Group Paint has a brush-like interface and basically uh, lets you just paint polygroups sort of one by one across the mesh. So we're going to make the brush actually basically pretty small and I'm going to, because I want to essentially pick triangles at a time. And you'll see there's a hot key, a few hot keys down here, particularly this one, Shift Q for new group. So what that means is I can just hit Shift Q and then paint new groups really quickly. So I'm just going to paint some groups in here and I'm just hitting Shift Q each time. Basically I can fix up any places where it made mistakes. Let's check this side. There's one, there's one. And I think now, if I accept this, jump over to the PolyEd tool, you see that I basically rebuilt the quads in this little part of the surface. And this is actually enough to do the editing that I want to do. So basically, I'm going to pick this quad, I'm going to do an inset, and then I'm going to do an ex oh, select it again, and extrude. And then another inset. Just want to make some. And maybe scale this down a little bit. And then we'll do a bevel. Okay, so that's my geometry. And I'm going to do one more thing actually that I forgot. I'm going to go in there and I'm going to insert an edge loop here along this. I'm going to switch this to even, and I'll, you'll see why I want to do this in a, in a second. Okay, so I'm good now. I've made my little sort of control panel shape. You see the UVs are all kind of messed up. So one of the other things that groups are useful for um, is doing UVs. So I'm just going to jump back to group paint. I'm going to change this mode here to group fill. So what group fill does is it automatically fills an entire group when I paint. Uh, so if I use the shift G to pick up a group, so I say I pick up this green group. Now when I paint here, it's going to fill that entire group. So that's a quick way, you know, to merge a bunch of groups. You can just hit Shift G on one and then paint the others or just allocate a new group. Uh, so I'll use, make a new group for here, Shift Q, and then I'm just going to paint all of these together. So this does mean I won't be able to edit them anymore uh, as, a, as separate parts in the polygroups tool. I can use the C key, this is a shortcut in modeling mode, to kind of recenter the camera. That's really useful. This is a, a, a feature we have just in modeling mode for when you're doing uh, editing like this. Okay, so I think that's good. Now I'm going to go back to PolyEd. Now you see that that whole region is a single polygroup, so it's like a single kind of face I can select, which uh, is going to let me do some UVs, UVs on it. So I'm going to do a planar projection. On that part, I'm going to use that center vertex that's there to snap to, and then uh, one of the vertices on the side. So if I can kind of eyeball it, but because I put in that extra edge loop, I have a point here I can snap to, so I know it's exactly aligned. Okay, so now um, I'm going to accept that. So this kind of looks bad because the UVs are really scaled. Uh, I could, I know this, this, sorry, this planar projection operation doesn't have a scale in it right now. So I'll just go back do that again. So I'm going to accept that. So I'm going to now I'm going to jump into the UV editor to fix that. So I'm going to go to actor, asset tools, UV editor. Now you might not have this option. You have to enable it 
in plugins, if you search for UV editor, this is a new plugin we added in 5.0. It's not enabled by default. But once you enable it, then you'll get this in the, over here. So if I zoom out, you see here's that huge uh, quad that I had just made, uh, or huge shape. And I can go over here in the 2D view and tumble it. There it is. So I'm going to switch this to the gizmo up here. I'm going to scale this way, way, way down. Zoom in. Oops. Scale it down some more. Until it's just about the right size for this. I, I happen to know that this is where the arm is on this chair. And if I get it just right, it'll even blend in. So I'm going to click apply. Go back to the chair here. And you see we've done a reasonable job. The normals don't quite match. Uh, we probably want to go in and recompute normals on this. Uh, but you see I've got the, there's a baked uh, tangents that are more or less aligned there. So, but that's a simple example of how you can do uh, sort of in-place editing on an existing triangulated mesh by building up some polygroups and then using those polygroups in PolyEdit. Thanks for watching.